Hello friends, once again, welcome to Tech with us and in the video tutorial series on CAN protocol. Friends, in the last video, we talked about various elements of a CAN frame. And we had also seen the differences between standard and extended CAN frame. Now at this point, I think it is important for us to understand how the data in forms of zeros and ones actually transmitted on CAN bus. So in this video, I am going to talk about CAN bus electrical characteristics. Means how a dominant and a recessive bit sent on the CAN bus. So before going further, if you have not subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe for all upcoming updates. So let's start. Friends, a CAN network consists of a number of CAN nodes which are linked via a physical transmission medium. For example, in this network, we have three CAN nodes. Let's call them node A, node B and node C. A modern CAN node consists of three sub-elements. A host. It can be a microprocessor or a microcontroller which is actually running the core application to do some specific job. A host decide what the received message means and what message it want to send next. Next is the CAN controller which deals with the communication functions prescribed by the CAN protocol. And it also triggers interrupt upon transmission or reception of CAN messages. Then it has CAN transceiver which is responsible for transmission and reception of data on the CAN bus. It converts the CAN signal collected from the bus into a stream of data which CAN controller can understand. Don't worry about these levels now, we will talk about in a moment. An unshielded twisted two-wire line is used as a physical transmission medium to transmit and receive data. It is also called CAN bus. The bus consists of two lines, CAN high line and CAN low line, which are also called as CAN H and CAN L. The transmission happens with the help of differential voltage applied to these lines. Now why CAN uses twisted pair and differential voltage technique for communication? It is because of its environment. In a car, including motors, ignition system, there are many devices which can cause data loss or corruption due to noise. And twisting of these two lines also reduces the magnetic field. The bus is terminated with the help of 120 ohm resistance at each end. Great, so now let's see with the help of differential voltage technique how zeros and ones transmitted on the CAN bus. So this is the voltage graph which shows the voltage levels of CAN high and CAN low line. In CAN terminology, a logic 1 is called as recessive and logic 0 is called as dominant. So when the CAN high line and CAN low line both are applied with 2.5 volt, the actual differential voltage of the bus is 0 volt. A zero volt on the CAN bus is read by CAN transceiver as a recessive or logic one. Remember, it is reverse. Zero volt is read as a recessive or logic one. And it is the ideal state of the bus. And when the CAN high line is pulled up to 3.5 volt and CAN low line is pulled down to 1.5 volt, the actual differential voltage of the bus is 2 volt, which is treated as logic 0 or a dominant bit by CAN transceiver. Very important to note here, when the bus state made dominant or logic 0 by a node, it is electrically impossible to drive the state to recessive by any other node. This piece of information we will be using when we will talk about the bus arbitration. Let's recap once, so there will not be any confusion. Logic 1 is called as recessive state, 
so to transmit one can high line and can low line both should be applied with 2.5 volt logic 0 is called as dominant state to transmit zero on the bus can high line must be pulled up to 3.5 volt and can low line should be pulled down to 1.5 volt the ideal state of bus is recessive and if one node meet the bus state to dominant, it cannot be drive back to recessive by any other node. So friends, here we come to end of this video. Please share your feedback on this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel techwithus.learn for all upcoming updates. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it.